adjust that down a little bit. Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, this video, I believe, is going to be very interesting, as you can see. Well, can't really see, but I'm actually in, in my bunk. <laughs> but, uh, it's been a day, and, uh, whew, some days it's trucking. You know, we just got to keep going, and, uh, you know, freight's got to be moved, and... Unfortunately, some days I'm the one's got to be part of it, but uh, I, I'm blessed to have a job, uh, first of all. And, uh, you know, and every time I walk into a grocery store, I walk in somewhere and I see people getting the very needs that they need, it uh, makes all this craziness worth it. So, uh, anyways, here we go. This is. Uh, just going to dig into it. So, as they say, breaking news. For all everybody that thinks that everything is a joke and hell's not real and, the, you know, people go and live into their own reality realm, uh, you know, have, have, have you been paying attention lately to celebrities? You know... Uh, Jack Black, uh, the Katy Perry, the Kardashians, you know, you, you look at Bruce Jenner that went from winning Olympics, being on weedy boxes, now a female. And, you know, the Illuminati controls all this. The Illuminati is nothing new, people. This thing's been around for a long time. The devil's been around for a long time. Then listen to them confess that they signed their name off into blood. There's a lot of them that are saying this. A lot of them, when they're being asked questions, won't even answer it. Some of these rappers and stuff that had that have Christian uh, families are denying Christ. You and, and Jesus clearly says, if you are ashamed of me, I will be ashamed of you to my father. People, we got to understand this stuff is real. You know, the devil wants you to think that it's fake. You know, you get so many people on here because I call anything outside of your house, anything that you drive to the store in, anything that you go to work and you bypass every day, the devil's playground. Well, it is. I mean, you go back to when Jesus was baptized. Jesus was baptized. So what does that tell you? tells you that there's a reason why we need to be baptized because we're made clean all everything's erased from us we do it publicly because we're not embarrassed of it we're not ashamed of it jesus wasn't ashamed to be baptized jesus didn't need to be baptized but he was baptized because we he had to learn as we learned it's like going to work for somebody that their kids take over the business if the owner of the business their father or mother whichever was right they would make them learn the business by working in the business. That way they appreciate it. God sent Jesus to learn that way. Yes, Jesus didn't need to be baptized. He didn't need to have the Spirit of God fall on him. But God did it. Because he knew the time when Jesus went to the cross and Jesus would go back to heaven after defeating hell. He knew he was going to be able to pour out a spirit where he could be everywhere. Like Jesus couldn't be everywhere. He had to walk or take a boat. Sometimes they said he would just leave. Did he go back into the spiritual realm and transport from one part to the next? Nobody knows. It doesn't really matter. Do we put a lot of thought into that? Because I'm sure, I'm sure somebody will have something to say about that. But the Bible clearly states he pulled Elijah and them straight up out of here. Philip was transferred from one place to the next. Well, how did that happen? It's amazing how people a la carte the Bible and take out what they want out of the Bible and use it for their own purpose and gain. Well, okay, well then, then don't be upset when I call you a devil because that is a devil. That's falling under the devil's practices. You know, this isn't going to be an easy teaching here. So, you know... Grab your popcorn and kick back because th this one's going to take you on a roller coaster ride. And the nuggets along the way, gather them and put them in your bucket. Because you know why? Because 
I'm going to expose the devil truly for what it is and who he is. He's a liar. He's a thief. He's a destroyer. And he doesn't care. He doesn't even care about the fallen angels. He doesn't care about the sinners that he has in there. All he cares about is how much sin can you do? And how many people can you bring? If you can't bring him anything, he's calling his debt to you. Look, I I listened to a thing a while back about Katy Perry crying and in, in having suicidal thoughts. Well, the problem is with that, if you signed your name away in blood, you made a deal with the devil. You signed it in blood. As far as I know, I have never heard anybody that signed their name in blood and their name be still written in the book of life that did not go into hell when they pass away. I had somebody post on there and um, uh, I haven't got a chance to go back on there and comment, but... Uh, I, hopefully this is the last time I got to say this because I, I'm really starting to get a little exhausted with this. Just because you have seen something or someone else testifies in another video, they have seen something doesn't mean everybody sees it. You have to understand you either, some people go in flesh and some people go in spirit out of body experience, near death experiences. Most, most of them people are out of body experience, near death experience out of body. They're seeing their bodies. Listen to what they're saying. I can see my body where it lays. Okay. You're in a spirit form. When you're in spirit form, you don't have no feelings. You don't have any emotion. You're just there. You move around like the angels. In body experience, which I have experienced, one person even commented about there, well, I don't believe that you would need Jesus to go into the throne room. Well, don't believe me then. You know, if if, if you want to come on here and, and compare apples to apples, like I say all the time, then let's do it. You want my email? I'll give you my email. Because I'd rather you do it on there than to waste time and, and distract people because that's what you are. And I rebuke you. I rebuke you, devil, and I rebuke what you're trying to do because you've done it from the beginning of this time and you don't care about anybody and you don't even care about these little messengers that you're sending into places because if they can't do any good for you, you're going to take them back. You ever wonder why all these people that, that have formed into this Illuminati, Beyonce getting on there doing the triangle, uh, Jim Carrey getting on there doing the triangle, sticking your tongue through the triangle. You ever wonder why they're doing all this? Because if they don't do and obey by and what they're doing, they will not have a career. The problem is their lust of their lives and, and their their mansions, their expensive cars, their expensive clothing, their expensive lifestyle, period, is more important. You ever notice the tattoos and all the stuff? They go in there normal and then they start tattoos and piercing themselves up, making themselves look different because that's the only thing they got control of anymore is they're outside of their flesh. They have no control over nothing else. If they tell them to go lay down with the dog and do things with the dog, they're going to do it. That's how controlling the Illuminati is. That's how controlling the devil is. These people are speaking it. But there's too many earmuffs on because they don't want to hear it. The people of the world don't want to hear it. People are saying, well, God this and God that. I've been saved, so I'm going to heaven. Really? Are you a sinner? Just because if I'm saying I'm saved, that means... I surrendered my life to Christ. I'm reading the Bible. I'm studying the Bible. I'm living by the Bible's ways. I'm not gossiping. I'm not running around doing the, the sinful things of the world. I'm not watching scary movies. I'm not bringing that occult crap into my home. I'm standing up for my family and I'm, I'm protecting them from that outside. I'm not laying down. I'm not a mat. So many men are becoming doormats. Well, my wife makes more money. So I, after the COVID, COVID nothing. I'm sick of hearing about that. Get up, do something. You were fine before this nonsense. You realize there's two jobs to every one person right now. Two jobs. You can have two opportunities right now. People, it's time to wake up. 
When did we start listening to the government and believing what they said? They said, mask on, we all put them on. I only put them on when I had to. And that was going shipping and receiving. And only because the Lord says, unless it dis it comes against the Bible, I'm the fall man's rules. Well, you see what they're doing. They're testing us. They tested us all the way across the field. Are we going to do this to be able to go eat and buy food? Right there, people. Right there is proof. If you don't have the mark, you're not going to be able to buy food. If you didn't put the mask on, you wasn't allowed in the stores. They were quickly escorting you out of there. And just like I told them. Is my hands clean? I don't know. What, what, what about that stalker that just touched all that stuff coming off them trucks? Them trucks, some of the stuff in these trucks are nasty in these trailers. How do you know them people that loaded that had a mask on? I mean, I can go down the list of things that would make you go, wow. But I'm not going down that avenue right now. The devil wants to, to deceive you. The devil wants to take your children. Because God sent his son. So the devil wants to take your children. If he can't break you, he's going to take your children. And he's going to try to use love against you. Well, I've testified all the way down the line. Each one of my children, one by one by one, because I say a simple prayer. Lord, take anything away from me. Anything that's going to cause me to sin, anything that's going to bring me harm, grief, headaches, anything that's going to bring me pain, take it from my life. And I got to I gotta accept that. I got to accept if it's people. I got to accept that he's pulling people out of me. I don't need no thorns in my life. I love my children. Yes. And, and, and the one comment that one person said, you should be ashamed of yourself. You, you, you should have been a stand-up dad. You... Really? Did you miss the other videos where I talked about sleeping in a car? Because I had to go through all the hoops. And I had to pay all this child support. And uh, even when she was going out and doing the wrong things. I was walking around with holes in my boots. And wrapping up cardboard and duct taping it. Just so I could walk on, on, on boots. I went days without eating at times to make sure my kids had food. Even though she was on public assistance, getting food stamps and selling them and doing all this nonsense, I still did the right thing. So how are you going to tell me to stand up and be a better father? As they say sometimes, do your homework. I don't care. Come against me. That's fine. If, if you feel better about yourself trying to break another spirit down... Then go ahead. I'm just going to keep bringing it. But like I said, if you're going to come against me, then you got to expect me to be able to comment back. And you should be able to take it. Because the old saying is, if you can dish it out, you can take it. If you can't dish it out, if you can't take it when it comes back to you, then don't dish it out. Don't come into the kitchen saying, I know how to make this soup better if your ingredients are no good. Because I want to taste something good. I want to be able to eat and enjoy a meal. I want to break bread with my brothers and sisters. I don't want to put a stew on the table that it's it's rotten. So. Start opening your eyes. Start looking outside. Start looking at what the devil's doing. This is the devil's time. His son, the Antichrist, is rising up. The stage is almost set. The curtains are ready to be pulled open and exposed. Well, some people believe in the pre, some the post. Some people believe in the midterm, you know, the mid rapture and stuff. I really don't have a lot of thought on that. I just believe in the pre-trib and I believe we're going to be taken out of here. I don't know about no posts in the middle. We're going to see some of the things. I believe we're seeing the signs of the events that are going to take place. I believe God's going to show all kinds of signs of things that's going to happen 
after the rapture, which you're going to go through, and that's taking on the mark in the right hand or taking it across your forehead. Once you do that, there is no asking for repentance. There is no asking Jesus because guess what? Jesus is reigning up in heaven. His hearing's cut off. He's not going to hear you crying out because he's going to be spending time with the loyal ones that that did and sacrificed and stayed away from the world's ways. He's going to be spending time with them. And he's given all of his attention to them because these are the ones that the Father has given him. Read the Bible. It's in there. You know, we're, we're quick to point fingers. We're quick to pass judgment because I, I come to this conclusion. The people that come against hell are so fearful of it. They don't want to hear about it. You want to stop it. Because why? Because I, even the ones that comment, I go to church every Sunday. How dare you talk like this? Well, what does your pastor do? Is he talking about hell? Is he talking about revelation? Is he talking about the events to come? Is he looking out the window right now and saying, people, this is, this is, we're close to Jesus coming back to the earth. Are they? No, they're bowing down, sitting down, half of them. Do you understand most churches today are spoon fed the word? They get lessons shipped to them or brought to them and they read off of those through the month or they'll do a teaching a, a couple months teaching on that it could be eight sermons or nine sermons whatever it comes down to you ever notice why they go into these long sermons because it's spoon fed to them because half of them don't even sit down because I talked to a pastor once a, a while back and he said listen man I'm so busy going to hospitals and everything else I don't have time so I don't mind when they bring me sermons when do you read when do you got time to get into the bible when do you got time to dig in and come against that they have guidelines he says guidelines you took that position god called you into being a pastor you get yourself up on that dang on platform and you tell everything not just some things everything. What good is it if we talk about self-righteousness and talk about how great our lives can be and, and we should be prospering? If God wants you to prosper, you're going to prosper, but do the right things. There's nothing wrong with having money. It's the love of money. That's the problem. It's lustful things, things that you seek outside of God and put them things over God. Those things should be taught right now. But no, instead, we're going out there and putting ourselves in worse chaos because it's a luxury life, isn't it? Pleasant. We're going out and buying all these books from all these motivational speakers. And again, that's what they are. They call themselves evangelists or whatever they want to call themselves. They're motivational speakers. They're collecting your money and laughing all the way to the bank, people. Laughing all the way to the bank. Who else laughs? Satan. Every time he pulls one of your children away because you're too dang gone busy, worried about yourself, too busy fighting with your spouse because you wasn't equally yoked in the beginning and now you got children and you're going to let your children grow up. You know, Jesus broke the generational curses, but we bring them back. Don't even get me started on the generational curses because, man, that brings up so many topics. So many people come against this because they said that's nonsense. Is it? Then Jesus is nonsense. Why don't we just throw the Bibles? You know, why don't we just start taking down the American flags and throwing them in the fire? Why don't we just go up to the Capitol building because the Biden administration, Biden sits up in there and sells everything off for money because he just did it when he brought all that Illuminati gayness into the White House and had a big old party on your tax dollars. You paid for it. Because we pay taxes. We pay their taxes. We pay their salaries. They work for us. We the people. They work for we the people. All of us that pay taxes. I don't care what country you're from. You're still paying taxes. These leaders need to wake up. We need to wake them up. You think the Biden administration, you think the Obama, 
Oh, don't you talk about a ball. Well, I voted for him. And what did he do? Not much. What did he do? He gave to free phones, free this, free that. Well, I didn't get any of that stuff. I'm paying, I'm paying and paying and paying and paying. And everything's rising, 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 rising. And I'm struggling, struggling, struggling. But the people that are are not working, not wanting to work because they got knee problem, they got this problem and that problem. Let me tell you what. They opened so many doors to where people didn't have to work. The COVID, I'm fearful to go back to work. Okay, well, here's, it, here's some more money for you. Stimulus after stimulus. They all of a sudden gave all this money to the elderly people during the election time. And now I hear that they're pulling this stuff back. You don't get the grocery money no more. But thanks for voting for us. Remember a couple videos back when I said, how much are you for sale for? Man, I got some hits, hits, and hits. Left, right, jabs. You, you Just when you think they're, they're coming for in with the left hook, they're coming at your body. They're coming at your body on the other side, and you're... You're moving, and you're jabbing, and you're ducking, and all of a sudden, there's too many blows. Because we're allowing this nonsense to take place. I'm serious, people. These churches should be ashamed of themselves. Wait till I I'm 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 gonna do the church thing next. No, God's timing. There's too many people that are suffering demonic attacks. There's too many people having nightmares. Too many people having panic attacks. Too many people that lay in their bed and their hearts are racing. The devil is at work. One girl, and I haven't got permission to use her name, so I'm not going to use her name. One girl sent me a... a she sent me a message, and I'm just, I'm not going to use word for word because really off the top of my head, uh, oh, that's right. That's right. I don't have my scripts in front of me because people write all my stuff out, and I just read off the script. Right. I wish it was that easy. And also, just so that person knows, I don't even answer the comments. I have the 16 people that I got working for me do all that. That's why there's so many unanswered comments right now. And I thank you all for being patient with me. And and I honestly really do. I am working very hard to get back to the older videos and stuff. And um, the hell one. Uh, man, I'm still trying to touch on those ones. Um, like I mentioned in that one. Whew, Man, this guy ripped. I mean, this guy brought a samurai sword, and he wasn't going to stop until he cut me into pieces, slipped me down, threw me in, in, into a million pieces, and I'm just like, good night, man. I mean, give me a give me a second to breathe for, for three seconds. But wait, that's right, because you follow the devil, and the devil don't give you time to do anything. When does he hit you? When you're down, and he keeps you down. He drags you down. Oh, that's right. He drags you into hell. I'm a fake. I'm a phony. I haven't seen hell, this and that, because they certain people seen this. How come I... I told you, I'm going to do... I, I thought about, and I actually wrote it down, and I'm thinking there's no way I can do it all in one video. So I'm going to have to do two. And after that, I'm probably done with the hell thing, unless I'm doing videos like this, because I want to wake people up. I want to shake the foundations, and hopefully this starts waking people up. But I guarantee it, them last two hell videos, if it doesn't wake something in you, I don't think anything will. I really don't. And that's the scary part. Because if you don't start questioning stuff, you don't start seeking for yourself. Because read the Bible. Read Revelation. 
because <laughs> I'm trying, trying not to laugh on this one, but uh, if I'm such a liar, go into Revelation and look up the pale horse. Look it up. It's in there. You seriously called me out and said, that's not even in the Bible. You're making stuff up. It's in the Bible. It's in Revelation. I promise you. It talks about the, the four horses. The pale horse, the black horse, the white horse. And I think the other one's red, if, if I remember right. Look it up yourself. Apology accepted. Thank you. I don't hold grudges. It's all right. See, what's what's great about my life is this. You, you're going to always get someone that's going to comment from hell. And, and I say hell because that's where they're at in their life, in their daily walk. Take a fool's advice. I've been there. Nothing good came out of it. Nothing. I have wrecked more cars. I I literally hit a, a pole so hard. And I think I testified on, on one of the videos. If not, this may be the first time you hear it. My sister was following me. I hit a pole so hard. It literally pushed my engine. Buckled my hood to overtop the roof of the car, push the engine into the front seat, the front seat to the back seat, and I came out the trunk. And you tell me there's no God? Then you explain that. Yeah, my face looked like a, a, a pack of raw hamburger. But that was it. They thought I was cut all over, and here was just blood, because I cut the top of my scalp here completely open I mean literally and it bled like a stuck pig my nose split on this side coming down right that's all make believe I got a heck of imagination you know if I'm this good at telling stories you know, I, I should get a hold of Stephen King, man, and he will never have to write another book. I'll, I'll just give him all the information, and he could just pay me. And, uh, you know, we, we can make some movies, and, uh, hey, you know, give me a break. Unbelievable. You know... People take things however you want to take it. You can take things right. You can take things wrong. I, I come from a place in life where I, I would never be doing this if I was in the other realm. I wouldn't care. I didn't go out of my way to be mean. But I did go out of my way to keep people away from me. And here, here I am... I've lived it. I've been through stuff. And, and the amazing part is I'm, I'm trying to find one thing in my life that's, that I can finally go, man, here's something I haven't lived. I hope that day comes one day. If it doesn't, it will come when I go to heaven. And... Just an FYI for, for some of this. Just because you haven't seen it doesn't mean it's not there. Just because I haven't seen it doesn't mean it's not there. I haven't. I touched a little bit on the lake of fire, but I haven't really got into it yet because it's not time to bring it in. If I brought you everything and threw it on the table, I don't want to do that. I want you to be able to get it in parts. That way it sinks in. That way you, you start looking around and you start watching things. There was a guy that commented a while back and said, will you do a video for me? 
Well, yeah, because if you guys aren't asking me to do videos, man, I'm running out of things to talk about. I'm being sarcastic. I do videos, and I'm, I'm going to explain. I'm going to open myself up a little bit right here, you know, real fast. Um, so here's another nugget to throw in your bucket. I do videos. Some people say, well, man, your comments are kind of like the same comments over and over. Well, I'm limited to what I can write because the smartphone's only as smart. You know, your smartphone becomes a dumb phone if you don't know how to spell something and you spell it wrong for long enough, it, it takes that word. And if I don't know if the word's right or not, then how did I get through school? How did I get through there? How did I get my GED? The grace of God, because I needed that to keep the job that I had at the nursing home. I needed that to get my HVAC. How did I pass HVAC? Because I did labor jobs all my life, man. I did this stuff. I know it. I learned it. So passing a test wasn't so hard if I know it. Somebody says, here, go out and dig a hole. We need you to plant a, a cherry tree or, or a blossom tree. You know, I can go out there and dig the hole. I'll ask you how tall it is. So I'll go out and dig the hole perfectly, throw it in there, Take the wire mess back, take the burlap sack back a little bit, push it down and put the soil on it. Stake it up. I eyeball it, make sure it's straight, put the stakes in to keep it going straight. Because I know it. I used to be really embarrassed and wouldn't talk a lot, let alone come on and, and stand in front of people. Man, there would be times, there would be times that I would get so nervous, I would literally shake and have to run to the bathroom and throw up. I literally started carrying toothbrushes and toothpaste with me because I, I would get so nervous if I pronounce a word wrong, is someone going to make fun of me? And, you know, the anxiety. But look what the devil was trying to do. The devil was constantly trying to set me back because he knew one day this was going to happen. I don't know. All I know is this. We've came a long way, haven't we, on, on, these, uh, on, on this channel. There's a lot of you opening up. There's a lot of you that are sharing stuff. And I know it's not easy. Trust me. I feel for some of you, man. Some of the stuff I read... It literally sends me back in whirlwind in places, and it and it it drives me more. The more you open up about stuff, because I I believe you really believe, and I'm I'm hoping this is I'm right on this. I really believe some of you really trust me and believe that no one's going to come against you on this channel because if they do, I'll 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 delete them off of it. And, and I'll get them blocked off here. Because nobody's going to come on here and tear anybody else down. I, I'll, I'll give you my word on that. If you got my personal email and you email me, I'm not going to come on here and share your information. That's wrong what churches do. You're going to the pastor on behalf, and he is to help you. Yes, he can go to the elders, and the elders should be praying. But the gossip that all the way through there. You notice what I said? The gossip, your personal business through the church and the whole church and the whole congregation and people start looking at you and coming against you. People, that's why I said the devil's in the church. He sends his people in there. It's time to wake up. It's time to start seeing. These buildings are not safe from the devil. It's his realm. It's his playground. Nothing's safe from him. When we are raptured, there is going to be nothing safe. Nothing. You will either suffer. You know, people talk about the living dead. That TV series that was on. And I said, well, if you go all the way back, I think it was the 60s when they brought the Night of the Living Dead out. It was black and white. And you go all the way. I, th I, I believe it was in the 60s. I don't know. I... I for some reason, 
I want to say I'm right on that. But you think about it. All they did is remake it, remake it, remake it. You know, they make it different. You ever notice every time they make a movie different, it ends up not being as good as the original? Or they run it so long where you go, man, how many more times can they kill this person off? Well, in reality, you can say that, but in reality, I can throw it back at you. If it's a demon, you can't kill it off because it just goes back to hell and it sends the other back. Because that's what the Lord says. If you cast out one and it comes back and watches you and eventually knows it can get that piece of hair that it needs to get back in that crack, it goes and gets seven more. So now you got eight demons in you. You cast out those eight, they go get one more. You know, each one of those are going to get seven more. You cast out eight, they're each one of them is going to get seven more demons. No wonder why you end up with legions in you. And you and you can't concentrate and things are going crazy around you because you allow cray cray into your life. What in the world? Whoever started that word, cray cray? Every time I hear that, uh, I used to work at a place and they said it all the time and I would sit there and think going, unbelievable. I, what does that eat? I mean, crazy, crazy. I mean, I guess, I don't know. You know, some of this slang word is where in the world does this stuff even generate from? And I thought I had bad language, man. I should have came up with some words, man. I used to say, um, um, I can't think of it now. <laughs> It'll come to me, but, uh, I don't know. It'll come to me and people look at me like, what, what the heck does that mean? I don't know. It's my, it's my own language. You stay in your little world <laughs> over there and I'll be John Travolta, the, the boy in the bubble, or I think it was, that's what it was called. <laughs> Sometimes I looked at John Travolta and went, you should stay in that bubble, man. <laughs> it was a lot peaceful in there <laughs> to come out in this. Tom Hanks, when he got off there, you notice in the end of the movie, he, has, he had some bottles of water and he had, he had the, <laughs> was it a soccer? No, it wasn't a soccer, it was a volleyball. And uh, <laughs> forget it. I'm going back. I think about it. Some days I just, you know, there was a time, there was a time in my life and I was... I was at a point in my life where I was totally lost. I mean, like totally lost. Like I had no thoughts about anything. It was, I was like numb. Like I had no emotions. I was tired. I just never wanted to get out of bed and I knew I had to go to work. And I just lived the motions. And that's why I said sometimes a, a a happy clown is really a sad clown because I put on a happy face and I went through the motions. And I remember one day I had to go to the grocery store and I was filling up my tank. And I remember I just cashed my check and I'm looking at inside my wallet after I went in and paid for my gas. You know, that's back when we used that paper stuff. Yeah, I forget the name of it because it's it's almost gone. Because they they don't want us to use that paper stuff because they can't trace what we're doing. But anyways, I'll tell you a story right after on that what happened one day. It kind of I was like, yeah, there we go. But um, I filled my tank up. I literally walked inside. Grab something to drink. Grab the bag of fungins. I like fungins. <laughs> I say the word, it makes me laugh. <laughs> but I do. They're, I don't know. I know they're not good for you, but I, I look at it this way. Um, it's sometimes, you know, I, I, I know blood pressures and all that kind of stuff like that. I mean, I get it. And I, I do try to do the right things and eat right. But, um, I can't remember the last time I had fungus. But, uh, what's some other ones? Um, oh my 
gosh, I can picture them, but I can't, I just can't think of their name. But anyways, I used to mix them together. It was so good. But anyways, I went inside, grabbed some soda. I know. Hit, go ahead, pound on me. I know because some of you are health freaks, and trust me, one day I'll tell you what my what I ate from breakfast till I went to bed. Every two hours I was eating something, it, whether it was carrots, whether it was celery sticks, whether it was nuts. I had it. My trainer, my trainer that logged all of our food intake and stuff and our weights and calories and all that kind of stuff. Man, we slipped off one day and went and had a pizza. Well, he's driving by, he sees our cars and he knows it because he'd give us a cheat, one cheat day if we're really good, we got one once a week. If not, it was like once every two weeks, sometimes once a month. Depends on if we were making, being where we were supposed to be at with our weights and all this stuff. So he drives by, comes by, pulls in. We never seen him. He's sitting across from us in another booth eating a salad while we're munching away on pizza, <laughs> snack foods. And we're having a blast, and we're just sitting there just laughing and carrying on. The next day, we go in, and he goes, what did you guys do last night? We're, like, just shaking our heads. And he goes, none of you are going to confess? He goes, well, this is our workout for today. And I'm like, well, why are we going to do all this? I said, hey, do we still get our, our cheat night this week? He says, Oh, you want another cheat night over top of eating all that pizza and all that uh, appetizers you guys ate last night? We and our eyes got biggest saucers. He goes, yeah, you guys just all added an extra 10 miles on your run. Well, that's 10 miles out, people. That's 10 miles back. We had 20 miles now. I'm going, man, this sucks. <laughs> this is bad. And then he added another weight in a couple of our bags. And I'm like, man, this is heavy. You know, this is horrible. And when we were really bad, he put the boots on us and we had to run in boots. Not everybody, just certain ones because, let's face it, um, I didn't take orders too well and I had to run in boots a lot. It built my calves up pretty good, but uh, but in the long run, I was I gained speed. But anyways, get back to where I was. Um, that boomerang effect, people, I'm telling you. So anyways, I go inside, I buy some stuff, and I, yeah, just stuff. We'll just leave it at that. Um, I get back in, and I put the key in the car, and I started the car. And it's like my mind went blank. Like I had no, no life. I had a wallet full of money, and all I could think about this is before driving truck now. You know, all I can think about, how long would it take me to get to Arizona where it's warm? I can find a place that has a stream by it. You know, there's caves. You know, I, I'm sure I can get some kind of, I mean, I'm even picturing this out. Get me some knives and taping them onto sticks. And if there's animals come at me, I could just jam them out in my cave with my tent. Then reality kicked in. What am I going to do? Fish? Right. <laughs> you know, you start thinking about a lot of stuff. I think that's the only reason why I didn't do it. I think Jesus came and put things in my thoughts that day. Because I was leaving. I really was. Just had enough. And I, I believe a lot of people do. I, I believe a lot of people have that moment where the devil just convinces you to do things that 
you normally would never do because you're at the lowest the lowest point of your life and I believe that's when he's grabbing a hold of you even more But, we move on, we pick up. Look how, look how much technology we have and look how much God gets glory out of this technology even though it is nasty, this technology. You, you, what, do, what do they call those, um, those videos? I think they're called shorts or whatever. You go on there and you can click on one and you can watch it and it's only a couple seconds. And then you can scroll up and another thing comes on there. Another, before you know it, you spend two hours just going. What have you accomplished? What did you learn? By <laughs> I tell you what I learned. What a, what a waste of time watching all those things. I, I actually clicked on it one time because there was something interesting on there that that I seen and it had nothing to do with what I thought it was going to be and then I looked at the other one then it was like a dog video then it was somebody rescuing a deer out of the water I mean it was just like goofy stuff and I'm like how long does people probably sit and do this when you could pick up the word and read the word, or you could just sit and talk to Jesus. I talk to him all the time. Some days it's it's all the peace I have. There's things that I go through out here I don't even tell my wife. Some days I feel really bad, like today. You know, I'm just so frustrated, and I just kind of unload it with how the loads are going right now, and everything's happening, and just... and. But then she got on here was telling me about her day and um, I just sat and listened to her. You know, and that's that's the great thing about relationships. You know, we, we don't take it to heart. You know, we don't take it. You know, we know when each other's frustrated and it's best sometimes to just listen. It's it's good to listen to your spouse. It's good to listen and give her, you know, give encouragement. And some days we don't even have to say a word. Just all we got to do is listen. Because some days that's what your wife needs. Some days that's what your husband needs. The devil wants to make the women more powerful. He wants to de take the man out of the God role out of the leadership and put him down because the woman's going to go to work you know this women's liberal stuff I'm all for it go ahead go out there drive the trucks drive whatever you want to do do whatever you want to do in life and do it well but why is it why is it when you get a flat tire, now all of a sudden you're calling on a man to go change your tire? Well, why don't you get out there and change the tire? You want to be so women's right thing and, and you want to pound this down? That women's liberal thing, I think that's what, what it is. That stuff drives me up a freaking wall. How in the world can you sit there and say, a man this, a man that, a man that, but I'll tell you what, it's the man that's out there changing your tire. It's the man out there mowing your lawn. Majority of the cases. Now, I'm saying I, I have seen women. My sister did landscaping with me for years. She was a tough cookie. She wouldn't run the big mowers. Little hint to you guys. Well, a, a little, little nugget. Darlene, I took her out. She came to work with me doing landscaping once. And I put her on them big mowers. That woman, <laughs> she was mowing other people's <laughs> grass. I'm like running up there. No, no. It was commercial properties. And she's just <laughs> mowing and mowing and mowing. I'm like, and she could cut some straight lines, people. Man, I was I was string trimming and I was doing all the edging. And I'd turn around and she'd have a backpack blower on. Just blow it away. 
I'm thinking, please don't go, don't go below the neighbor's arms. <laughs> but I mean, I'm all for it. I'm not saying that anything, but I'm saying a household has an order. A lot of these women come in and start degrading the men because the devil wants to empower them. It's okay to have an education. It's okay to make more money. But when it starts becoming your money and his money and you start throwing that garbage up, you've done crossed the line you shouldn't have crossed. You're allowing the devil to control you. Why do you think so many celebrities own a house and the other person own a house? You know why? Because you're afraid of commitment. You're afraid and you're giving yourself the devil is giving you an out. The devil already set your marriage up for failure. The devil already set your next relationship up for failure because you're not going to want to get rid of it. There's too many of them. Too many of them that talks about, no, I keep my own house. We spent so much time at my house, so much time at her. Really? We hear, we got separate bank accounts. It's just easier. La, 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 la. You set yourself up to fail because the devil, all he's got to say is, man, you got your own place. You got your own money. You don't need this stuff. Go on. Leave her. Go on. Or leave him. Go on. Billy down here, he's a lot better. Cross over that fence. Don't forget to go down there to Peter right down the road if Billy doesn't work out. And hey, their cousin Jim that lives right back behind there, just keep going. I'll keep leading you to the next one, to the next one, because you don't have no commitment. You may say you got commitment, but the soon as something goes wrong, you're leaving. Give me my toothbrush, I'm leaving. Here's your key, I'm leaving. It's too easy. The devil makes it too easy. So as soon as the going gets tough, you get running. Well, the devil wins again. It's too easy to give up on. It's too easy these days to give up on marriages. It's too easy to give up on friendship. It's too easy to give up on your children because you buy babysitters, video games, whatever they, whatever you listen to. Some of these kids talk to people. My nephew. His daughter talked to me so freaking bad, and she's just a little girl. They they allow her to put all this makeup on, do all these stupid poses, and they post it all over the thing, and they think it's the best thing ever because she's in cheerleading and all this stuff, and I'm going, are you insane? Look how your daughter's dressed. Look at what you're doing. You got hawks that are flying above you, looking and swarm, getting the swarm down and snatch your child. And then next thing you know, you got every news channel and missing children alert and driving down the road, billboards, missing car, you know, looking for this car, missing child, missing person. Unbelievable. Go back to that other video I did. What was your child? What was your child wearing? Well, you might know, but you're going to be so dang on embarrassed, you don't want to say it. Well, she was wearing a halter top that came up to here, and she didn't have a bra on, and you could see, and uh, the sides were cut down, and you can practically. Uh, she probably shouldn't even had a shirt on because she's done seen probably ninety percent of her body, and uh, she had shorts on beyond Daisy Duke shorts, and yeah, that was the last thing I remember seeing her wear, and when she went out the door. And then you wonder why somebody snatched her off the street. And I'm not exaggerating. Look at some of these people. Just go into your local Walmart. And I'm not coming against Walmart. I'm not coming against people. I'm just saying, when did we stop taking and stopping this? Just my opinion. But you want to know why the devil's taking your children away? You want to know why we got so many missing people? Because of that reason right there. Sex trafficking is such a high dollar business. And I say business because that's what it is. 
You understand if sex traffickers get your children, you most likely will never see them again. Somebody asked me once to, I was talking to this person and he brought a couple people and he said, can you tell them what you told me about sex trafficking? And I said, no, I don't want to. <laughs> he goes, please do it. Because I was telling them and they said, no, there's no way nobody can think like that. And I said, no, I really don't want to. He goes, please. And they're, they're saying, please. So I'm just going to tell you what I told them. You know that es Esteen Island out there and all that trafficking and all the nonsense that was going on and all these Hollywood stars that were involved in all this, the Clintons. I mean, I can go down the list of the people. I said, uh, well, well, what do you think happens on these islands? What do you think that's happening? They go, well, I don't know. I said, well, they're, you know, they're, they're, it's, it's about sex. People are buying people. They're having sex with them. They're drugging them up. And they're uh, holding them hostage. He says, well, he said, now tell them about what happens if they, when they die. How do they dispose of the bodies? I said, really? You know, you ever see all them big fishing boats out there? How do you know they're not taking those bodies, cutting them things up, and just dumping them into these sharks and, and disposing them? You know, shark chews on the bones and all, people. It's, it doesn't doesn't uh, chew the meat off and leave your skeleton floating around. They got alligator farms. We got a lot of them down in Florida. You have no idea. I don't think I'm too far off on this. You ever stop and think why we never find half these people? I mean, they you can only bury somebody for so long. You can't, I mean, I mean, yeah, you probably could put the, what we used to call the concrete boots on them and toss them over the boat in the five-gallon buckets? You, you think that's not... That's actually happened. <laughs> Truthfully. Because it's kind of hard to float back to the top. And then fish and everything else feed off of you. This stuff is real. This is truly what's going on out there. All the crying in the world, all the things that you're going to try to do, it is so fast for these people to switch cars out. Put, you know, think about it. They literally steal license plates off a bunch of cars. Put license plates on cars. So while you're looking for a certain car and a certain license plate, they done swap the they done swap the plate. They'll go so far, they have another car sitting, and they swap that plate out, and then they keep moving. That's why they get away with this. And in the meantime, they're plugging, they're having your children nestled into a box or something with holes and stuff in it, and like you're bringing home an animal from the pet store. It's true. They're sick, twisted people. You know, when you got to get inside the devil's head to understand this stuff, people don't want to do it. That's why God chooses guys like me. Because I've been there. I've been in the devil's head. He's been in mine too many years. Why I started that father video. You got to keep a hold of it. There's nothing wrong. But you notice the, re the, the reversal of the roles? Men are staying home and women are going to work. Again, there's nothing wrong with a woman working. I'm not saying that at all. Nothing wrong with her having a, a successful life. But when it starts to take over the role and the roles are switched... She comes home and starts making the rules and applying the rules and the discipline. You just changed God's order. You changed it. So let me just give it to you in another step and I'll move on from that. You changed it, Adam. You took the bite of the apple when Eve came to you. Eve didn't know she was naked yet. You didn't know she was naked yet. You took a bite of the apple, Adam, 
And now you brought sin because you're allowing it. Doesn't matter who's working. Doesn't matter who's making the most money, who's doing what. If you allow division, it's going to be too dang on easy that that money starts becoming in her bank account and you're thinking in your head. And I know some of you out there are going to be like, yeah, he's nailing this one. Well, what happens when I was making all that money and it wasn't my money, it wasn't your money, it was our money. What? Good point. I'm glad you brought it up. What about those times? Point taken. I rest my case. Jury says, guilty. Because you are guilty. You know why? Because the media... The TV shows, Housewives, look at that nonsense. What a bunch of nonsense. I used to watch that nonsense, by the way. Somebody got me hooked on that stupid show, and I was like, I was like, why in the world? And one day I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, what is even going on on this? You know, and you sit back and you go, talking about depressed I mean, you. if you're not depressed, you're going to be depressed after watching that crazy stuff. Jersey Shore, newsflash, half them are not even from Jersey. It's all make-believe. Snooki wasn't even her name, not her name. The show, I believe, gave her that name, if I, if I recall right. Make-believe, people. They juiced them up a little bit, make them look good. And y'all buy it. That's why I'm against all these fake shows. And I'm, a, I'm against all this because it's false leading. There's so many kids that watch this stuff and think this is okay. There's so many kids that end up going into Mexico for for uh, vacation time. And all the kids get together and stuff. And they snatch them off the streets. You, you're dealing with cartel. You're dealing with... You're, my thing, here's, you ever think about some of this stuff? I mean, this is the stuff that I think about. It's the cartel. They're, they're the most feared thing over there. And they're bringing this nonsense into the United States. These drug dealers are killing, killing people. Murderers. I don't care if you're just a little peon drug dealer or you're a big boy. You're killing people. It's murder. And all they get charged for was possession and, and, and intent to sell. No, they're murderers. Treat them as murderers. Lock their butts up. Get them off the streets. But no, what do we do? I said it. I said it. I wrote it down. I said, marijuana will become legal. And people looked at me like I was crazy. CBD? I said, can you pass a drug test with that? Does anybody really know? And people want to be, oh, man, it'll take your pain away. Ah, uh, you understand? I don't give a... If I get pulled over with CBD and, and it shows traces of marijuana, my butt's going to jail. You realize every 12-ounce can of beer, you need eight hours to get that out of your system. So think about that when you're going to these bars and you're going around and wondering why you're getting a DUI. Doesn't take long, people. The devil wants you. If he had you once, he's he's not going to give up on you. It's just a bigger game for him now. The hunt's on. He just keeps bring, sending a different hunter until he gets you back. about it and if he can't get you back he's going to destroy your marriage he's going to destroy your kids he's going to destroy your job he's going to destroy your careers he's going to destroy everything around you he's going to make your cars break down he's going to make your finances fail he's going to do everything until he breaks you and then he's going to make you have suicidal thoughts he's going to make you be depressed he's going to make you gain weight oh wait we already did all that that was through the nonsense other other stuff and 
people are going to tell me the devil's not real. Well, I just gave you a little over an hour of a not real person. So hopefully when you you come across this one, because it, I, I know some of you really are looking for everything and anything. But like I said, you, you come on this channel because it's different. You come here because I'm not going to put shake and bake on it and put it in the oven and tell you it's a pork chop and it's a piece of chicken. Because you're going to look at me and go, it's a piece of chicken. <laughs> I'll be like, no, no, it's not. It's pork chop. Trust me. I'm not going to trust you. <laughs> it's a piece of chicken. I mean, think about how, how, the rea how this reality goes off. Because I say it's right doesn't mean it's right. Just because they say something's right doesn't mean it's right. If it matches God's word, then it's right. I think I touched on everything that I was going to on this video. But uh, either way, I'm always doing follow-ups on stuff, and uh, I, I, I just, again, I, I thank you all. I appreciate each and every one of you, and uh, um, I'm never going to stop being who I am today. So, much love to you all. Oh, wait. Wait. That's right. I can't say that. Because that means I, I, I don't, much love to y'all. Much love, much love to y'all and big hugs. Because I care about you. I love you. And I want to see you in heaven. I may never get to see your faces down here, but guess what? In heaven, I'm going to know that I know you. Yeah, you're going to have a new name. God has a different name for you because this earthly stuff isn't going to matter. What an awesome day that's going to be. I, I still do pray oh, that we all get together during the rapture and we walk through the gates of heaven together. And we go get washed, cleansed, renamed in nice white robes. Mine's going to say Nike. You guys don't get Nike. Just me. Can you imagine? <laughs> you guys are probably like, man, he's lost his mind. <laughs> but think about it. Some, uh, I, how about, how about if, if I pick out some Nike robes for some people, some people Reebok, and the people that that wasn't so nice... Even if God brings him up. Because God's the ultimate judge anyways. And so I recognize him and be like, oh no, I, I I have your robe over here. You guys, <laughs> this is this is the stuff that goes through my head. Think about Charlie Brown when he's going to <laughs> trick-or-treating with that, that sheet on with all the holes. Here you go, here's your robe. Because you wasn't so nice to me. Now, what about the ones that didn't get the Nike and go, why did I get a Reebok, man? I got Adidas. All I got is a rock. <laughs> Think about it. How would you feel? Isn't it great that we have a God and a Lord Jesus that treats us all the same? We're the same for him. There's no hatred. There's no pointing fingers at someone and making fun of them. There's no, we're all the same language. How do I know this? Because everybody I hear talking sounds the same to me. We know everything. We know everything about everybody. We, we know each other. And we don't have to ask any questions because it's already there.
God gave us everything we need. That's what's awesome about it. We're all in the same playing field. There's no Nike. I got a Nike emblem. I got uh, my endorsements. I got a few million dollars. You don't. So what? You really think you're going to spend all that money? You really think the devil's going to let you spend all that money? How many more tattoos did you put on your body? Because you have no control over your body. Because most of you done sold yourselves. So let me pray, people. Our Heavenly Father, Father, thank you for this day and thank you for the time to make this video. And hopefully it's reaching lives and hopefully this one starts opening that realm in, in into the devil's the devil's lair as he sits back so many times and just laughs and mocks and just carries on and, and, and walks and says, how easy is this? We know that you're in control and we know that we surrender our lives if we surrender to you and truly live that life that you have given us. Excuse me. We know that we're going to walk where the angels trot and we're going to be up there and we're going to be present when the new kingdom is lowered down and this world is totally wiped completely fresh as it was in day one in the book of Genesis. There was no light, no darkness. It'll all be formed again. And the new kingdom will be lowered from heaven and it'll take place over this earth. There will be no countries. There will be just one big giant place and hell will be on the outskirts looking in. Well, wait a minute. What about the lake of fire? Well, that's coming in the other video. You're just going gonna to have to give you little nuggets for now. So you can just, it, it, and again, if I gave it to you all at once, but either way, Lord, I thank you. I thank you for giving me the courage to, and, the, and the strength. I lift up each, indivi each individual person. Lord, I ask for whoever comes and watches these videos that the chains start to get broken. The chains that they made, them links that they put together, and from small little links to, to big titanic size links. And that's the best way I can describe it. The big chains that comes off them big ships and those barges. Anybody that's been on a cruise ship, seeing them big chains coming up, that's how big your sins get. And that's how heavy your chains get. It's a massive, massive motor that lifts those chains. But sometimes we got to carry them around. We don't have the motors. I break for those broken chains. I, break, I, I, I pray for spiritual sight. The blinders be taken off. The hearing must be taken off that they hear your voice and they hear the messengers that you send forth on your behalf they they come through the devil's plans are destroyed i know right now he's he's kicked back and he's going okay we got to stop this it's okay he's trying he's trying very hard but the encouragement and the people the people that are feeding back the people that are receiving from this the people that are starting to wake up you know, it's, it states in, in the Bible that you shall rise the dead. What is that? How many people ask? How many people think about this stuff but never ask because they're they're afraid that somebody's going to be laughing at them or carrying on? It's, it's like the kid that asks us a question. Everybody laughs at him. That's the stupidest question I ever know. It's, it, the thing of it is you probably had it on your thought, but you were too shy and embarrassed because your pridefulness, and that's what gets you stuck in the mousetrap because you don't want to ask. Well, so God bless you for raising up and asking that question. You always walk in, walk in that that knowing and that confidence that you are loved. You are you were formed in your mother's womb by God and Jesus. That being said, I just ask for peace, love, and joy over all of them. I ask for their families start to unite back together. I ask for the husbands to start taking that leadership back. No matter who's the breadwinner per se as it goes. But let us still stay under the order. Women, I am, I am, haven't forgot about your video. Trust me. But I, st I still have to do a follow up on the men's. Because there's a few things that I left out. Yeah, I know men. Yeah, I, I, the good thing about it is. Uh, no, I don't have my punching bag no more. I don't know what I ever did with it to be honest. See. Anyways, let me get back where I'm at. Lord, I just pray that these people are receiving. I pray that they start calling back their families and calling their children back in. And 
grabbing that fishing pole and no matter how far they are and cast that hook and grab a hold of the back of their shirt collar and start wheeling them back home start watching what they're watching start taking some of this stuff away start listening to what they're talking about when they're online playing video games video games they're playing people just because it's call of duty you think it's a fun game you don't think there's guys in other countries that are sitting there watching how you play the game so they can recruit you think about it some of that stuff is so graphic on how to load guns and all this stuff come on man oh man don't even let me get started on video games and stuff like that but either way we thank you lord we thank you for going to the cross. We thank you for your blood being shed. And we thank you for breaking these chains and destroying the devil. I cast these devils out of their lives. I cast for I cast these eyes to be open and all the things that the devil's been deceiving them with and destroying them with. I cast them out of their lives in your blood, in your holy name, the Lord Jesus Christ, the, the Christ of all Christ, the King of all kings. There is nothing Nothing can come against us if you go before us. And the devil has no strongholds over us. He has no place in our lives. I cast him out. I cast him out of these children's lives. I cast all this nonsense, transgender stuff and all these confused. I'm confused. I don't want to pick yet what I am. I want to do this. No, you don't. You, you were born a male. God doesn't make mistakes. You were born a female. God doesn't make mistakes. The devil does. That's an abomination. You're going to end up in a place that you're going to wish, wish, wish. Oh, wait a minute now. Let's stop for a second. Let me come back out of prayer real quick here. There's a guy who told me, well, I didn't see, I didn't see no kids in hell. I don't know what you're talking about. That's a that, 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 I have. Prove it. Okay. You really want me to? Go to the Bible where Jesus cast out demons out of children. How is that possible? Because Lucifer planted them there. Doesn't matter how old you are. He likes getting it in the children's head. Because parents aren't paying attention to him no more. And he can put on hidden messages through their cartoons. He can put on stuff through their tablets that they watch now. Because nobody's paying attention to them. When was the last time you seen one of your children draw a color a picture and put it on the refrigerator? No, anymore. They shut up. You're losing it. Don't let the devil win. Don't let him take your children. God bless you guys. God bless you. Be strong. Lean on each other. Carry each other's crosses. Even Jesus had someone help him carry his cross. Not because he needed to. Because he had to show us how to carry. And allow somebody to help us carry a cross. So when the dust is all over you. I'll be there to help you dust yourself off. I don't want nothing more than you to go to heaven. At least you got something, right? Something's better than nothing. If you had a broken leg and I was the only crutch there, at least you got something. Beaten down, broken up, <laughs> but... You got some, you got a broken crutch, I guess. And see, it's it's okay to laugh, people. God bless you. Change tomorrow by learning from today. Till the next one. I love you. God bless.